the gods and goddesses have returned. They have been resurrected and pulled from the Nebonk sarcophagus by the hand of Atun Re, our own El Farti of this day and time. Now take a seat, sit back and listen to one of the master's students, Saken Ami Ib Maduti, one raised by the master of masters as he teaches the liberation information of this day and time. Nuwafu. It is truly our time.
and then she was pregnant. You know what I'm saying? So she had to copulate, right, with an angelic being to produce that child. Not a man, not men. We originally were not men. We are not men. The word man comes from the Sanskrit word man for moon. All those words mean moon. Moon, man, manu, all of those are the same words. You follow? We're not moon beings. We are solar deities. Rays, re, rock. And we have been reduced to men. So it's going to take gods to raise her back up to the level to be who she's supposed to be, not men. You follow? So that story was talking about a time when the sea had to be raised again because the people on the planet have become mortals that used to be gods. You follow? And the men had to be raised up back to God through what's referred to in biblical times as the order of Zadok, the Zodokim priesthood. You follow? This priesthood in Jesus' time was referred to as the Essene order or the ancient order of Melchizedek. It was a mystical brotherhood, right, where the select initiates would go, right, and be taught the necessary information that would give him back his godlike qualities. These were rituals and practices, and the order itself came out of the mission schools of ancient Egypt. Freemasons, European Freemasons, that is, took this concept and gave you the three degrees of Freemasonry. The Enter the Prince, Fellow Craft, and Master Mason. The Master Mason. You follow? At that point, you are what's referred to as resurrected. Anybody ever went through the law know what I'm talking about. You follow? And you are born again. And in order for Jesus to become who he was supposed to be, he had to be baptized by someone. Christians will tell you, well, that's baptizing for he, that Baptism is for remission of sins. Well, they say Jesus was sinless, right? What was he being baptized for? They don't realize that was a ritual of a priesthood that he was a part of. And after he was baptized, it says that the spirit of the Lord descended on him like a dove. Not before. So he wasn't a god before that point. He had to be initiated, right? And a ritual had to take place. And then he became God in the flesh. So the elders set up certain schools. And depending on the elder that was over the school or governed the school, a certain animal was depicted only to signify the school in question. So that people who knew when they saw a certain animal, they knew that that school or symbol that school was located in. Today, they have what they refer to as landing strips, right, or certain design, animal designs that you only can see from overhead. You can't see standing on the ground. You have to be in a helicopter, airplane, or a crab to see, right, these designs that they refer to as landing strips on the ground. Well, these were markers, right? And whether it's the pyramids in Giza, the ziggurats in Shuma, or the temples in South America, right? They were set in those places so incoming elders would know what school was set up in that location. What extraterrestrial was there teaching the men on the planet to raise them up to God? You know what I'm saying? And that's why, and I was there on Tamaray when the news helicopters flew over, because we didn't know that the eye of Ra was the shape that was there on the camera. We didn't know. All we know is we paved our roads that was necessary to get from point A to point B. You follow? It was the news helicopters that filmed the land from overhead that showed that the design of the camp was like the eye of Ra. Because we didn't know. We never talked about that. But when we saw it on the news that night, we were like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? That was wild. It was crazy to us. 
You know what I'm saying? But that's a, that what, what that is, is a marker for incoming extraterrestrials, right? Or whoever's overhead <laughs> to know what school was set up there. And some of these schools were depicted or symbolized by animals. So when you see certain Egyptian deities with the head of an animal, that doesn't mean that they actually had the head of an animal. That just depicted a school in the nature of that school. You follow what I'm saying? So these schools were set up to bring men and women back up. Or the men and women of our tribe back up to their godly status. Whoever was considered worthy enough to be initiated. Because your work has to be proven. Because they don't cast pearls to swine, so to speak. You had to prove that you were worthy and that you were eager enough to learn. And you had to have the patience, right, to wait to learn. You know what I'm saying? And the lodge through Freema European Freemasonry, all of this is just symbolic of that. They took this from ancient rituals from Africa. You know what I'm saying? And then they give it to you over here and it's just a game, <laughs> right? It's a game. They don't tell you, they don't, you don't have no secrets in the order of the Eastern Star and Freemasonry here. You go through those schools and you learn nothing. You think that you're going there to learn some secrets. You think you're going to learn secrets. And I'm telling you, I went through it. It's <laughs> a good thing. You secrets. You know what I mean? Europeans just gave black people something to do because they were begging for a charter through Prince Holland. You know what I'm saying? You don't have none of the real secrets. He ain't going to teach it to you. That's why Emma knew we were Akatar's necessary to come give you what he's not going to teach you. You know what I'm saying? He's over there in his little corner. He got all his information. Don't want to tell you nothing when it's your information. He stole it all from you. You know what I'm saying? So you're talking about a point where it was necessary to boost the genome. And that's why the schools had to be or had to reincarnate on the planet. Right? And then through those schools, you'll be raised back up again. Through the things that you need to know in order to be able to get you to, to elevate. Because the time comes, the time has come again for you to have to be in that state to transition. Because you're not gonna be able to cross over to the density or the realm that the solar system is now going through in the Milky Way galaxy, right? In the state that you're currently in. You have to be raised. You gotta get all of this garbage he putting you out of it. And that's not even the first, that, that's not even, at that point, you're not even, at, you're, not, you're not where you're supposed to be then. You are, you're being prepared, you're being prepped. Then you're taught. So before you're actually taught what you need to know, all of your preconceived ideas, right? All of your warped sense of reality have to, have to what? Be taken off, be taken away. And then now your mind is open enough for the correct information to be input. You know what I'm saying? So no, that, that's, what, that's what you're reading about. Now, <laughs> there was two tribes that came down, or two incarnations. One was were the group that came down and they birthed men of renown. The other group, it says they came down and they took or raped the daughters of men. These were your giants. These were the Nephilians. These were the tall, tribes that came down and they had schools set up also. You know what I'm saying? And these were the ones that came and invaded and raped, you know, certain tribes in Havila, what's referred to as Havila, right? Or Havilaites, to produce some of the West African tribes you see today. When you can go and that guy like Manu Bo, he's like seven feet tall. I came Elijah one of them guys. Because they came into Africa and they bred with the tribes that were there who were no taller than five foot, right? And mixed in with them to produce those tall tribes that you see today called the Dinka people, or Dinka. And they produced those tribes. And those tribes were more warlike. That's why you watch that movie Shaka Zulu. Shaka, you know, they show how he started, you know, war, started a lot of wars over there. Before they weren't, they weren't going to war. And they started, those taller tribes brought that into Africa. You know what I'm saying? The original tribes in, all, in most of the countries in Africa, the original tribe, they'll tell you, I don't care where you go, they said the original tribes were what? Dwarfs. <laughs> the short people in the forest. They're in the forest, but they ain't they don't want, they don't want to go nowhere near the city. They don't want to deal with nobody in the city. They're dwarfs. 
You follow? You have the dwarfs of the forest. And then you have the dwarfs of the spiritual realm that they refer to as Momotia. And those are the ones that exist in between these realms and personify the people who they, who, who they want to personify to, right? Who they go through and they do certain rituals to, let me go, certain rituals for them, you follow what I'm saying? But they vibrate on another density. You ask anybody who lives in Africa, they'll tell you about it. All you gotta do is ask them about the dwarves, the invisible dwarf people. You follow what I'm saying? Those are our ancestors. The tides, that's what it did to Ta in ancient Tamaray came from. Ta symbolizes the dwarves in Africa. You follow? And all African tribes will tell you that the beings that reside, the elders or ancestors that reside on the other side are dwarfs. And they call them different names. Momotia is just one of the names. You follow? In the Sumerian doctrine, they refer to Ta as Inki. Inki. They won't sprout forth until a certain time, until a certain time. They sit here, you can water it, have that dirt as nutri that nu nutrition rich, nutritionally rich as you want it to be. And it, well, it just won't sprout. It won't sprout for You follow? So there's certain plant life that can exist during certain seasons. There's certain animal life. Because there's certain species of animals when the winter time comes, when the winter time comes. Right? Certain animals go into what they refer to as hibernation. They're inactive. Basically in a dead or slumber state. They go, and don't believe me, check it out. They go, and their heart rate lowers to near death. You follow? And they stay that way the whole way. Their whole metabolism slows down. They put enough food in their body before they go into it to sustain it, right? During that whole time period. And then in the spring, which is where the word comes from, to spring forth, to sprout forth, those animals come back to life. And that plant life comes back because the trees do what during the winter? They die. All the leaves fall off and they just branches. But in the springtime, Greenery comes back, right? And come back to life. Right? But there's a certain seed and a certain plant life that only come to that, that only exists during the winter months. You follow? Now on this planet, there's certain animals that have to live in the Arctic. And they are their body, their body has been calibrated or adjusted to live in the Arctic. If you took a polar bear and tried to make it live in Africa, what would happen to that, to that polar bear? He would die like that. His body, his genes are calibrated to live in the Arctic, in the North Pole. That's a winter seed, you follow? Right, so you have a seed that can only live during tropical seasons, such as spring and summer, and during the fall and the winter, they start to decline and die out. Plant and animal life. Don't let them fool you. Keep a nine mind. Realize it's not just the plants. There's animal life on the planet that can only live during tropical months, tropical times of the year. And there's certain species that can only live during winter season. You follow? But then there's certain plant and animal species that live throughout whole cycle. You follow? Now they may be weakened at one point, weaker at one season than the other, but they live throughout. www.nawapuinc.com So on the human level, there's a winter seed of humans and there's a summer seed of humans. The winter seed of humans like cold weather. They have to be in cold weather. They have to live in an environment where the sun cannot shine directly on them at all times at its highest point, such as the equator. They can't live there. They have to live where the environment's conducive for their genetic structure. And then there's a summer seed in nature. 
right, who can take the full brunt of the sun. You follow? The winter seed looks at the sun as an enemy, and they have to block the sun by putting on sun block. The summer seed in nature can take the full brunt of the sun because they have natural sun block called melanin. Because the sun doesn't uh, the sun doesn't fight us. The sun aids, protects, nourishes. You follow? Now the winter time is the death time in nature because everything does what? Die. The summertime is the lifetime because everything is green, it's warm, it's sunny, and it's alive. That's why most events happen during the summer. Cookouts, parties, get-togethers. Everything is full of life. So there must be a human species on the planet that's full of life, right? Nature, that, rep that represent nature at its highest point, and there's a seed on the planet that represents what? Death by nature. And that's why he kills with no reason. That's why he'll kill an animal just to put his head on the wall. He'll kill humans just because he feels like he's superior to that human. You follow? He burns humans alive while they sit around and watch. They cut babies out of humans' belly, pregnant mother's bellies, and let them drop to the ground. He's that way by nature because he represents death by nature. You follow? And we represent life by nature. Get it? So when you're talking about the bottom of that circle, you're talking about the winter seed in nature or the winter cycle Right, and, there's a, and it represents the winter seed manifesting on the planet. As that cycle comes to an end, the cycle of rulership for that winter seed that represents death, it represents the end of their cycle, the end of their rule, referred to as a moon or a lunar or a silver cycle, the cycle of death, okay? Hopefully that was clear enough. Next question. So they know that people would take the chance of doing that. So that's what that's what it's coming to. And you know, that's the program where they're actually telling you where they you know they actually find it. They're not even they're not talking about the programs where they actually take it, homeless people off the street and use them for that purpose anyway. And they do it in third world countries all the time. They just recently got caught doing it over there in Chad. <laughs> you know, that whole fiasco that went down with uh, them coming in as a so-called humanitarian group and taking all those children out of there. And they caught them before they actually got out of there, right? And they were trying to say that they were from the far, and they were actually from Chad, and they had taken them from their parents, mm -hmm. and they caught them, right? So that's what that's what's going on. That's what they're doing. You follow? They look at them. Basically, they're looking at the mass of the population is what's referred to as useless eaters. Useless eaters. You follow? Not just useless eaters in the sense that you're useless. You're you you're a consumer. You don't produce anything. They look at you as cattle. You follow? But then you uselessly eat. That's why they have, now they got a, a population problem and they have a food problem because the climate is shifting abruptly. The climate is not shifting gradually. It's shifting abruptly. So they have to, they have to call, they call for drastic measures. So they figure since you just you, you eat uselessly, we'll feed you anything. 
And that's what they're doing. That's why you got all these recalls on food. Right? That's why you got all of these so-called bacteria being found in the food because they're feeding you anything. Because they don't have any food. The master teacher used to tell us a long time ago, he asked us in the class, he said, he said, when you look on the sign on the billboard on McDonald's, they always tell you how many burgers they've sold. They say 56 billion served. Right? Now McDonald's on a daily basis sells millions of hamburgers worldwide. I'm not talking about Wendy's, you know, Big Boy Burger, whoever. I'm talking about McDonald's. That's one restaurant. Millions of hamburgers. So-called beef. Right? Now, on the average, on the average, when you're riding out in the country, how many cows do you see? How many you see? You see, you see a few, right? Now, do you see nearly enough cows to feed billions of people beef every day? Do they grow that fast? <laughs> Don't they take a time? Don't they gotta be grown and raised? And, you know, where, where are all these cows coming from? They don't have many cows on the planet. So he hit us with that. He said, so now y'all need to think about what y'all really eat. Exactly what you're talking about. And the meat looked the same. It didn't change. Well, it's not meat. First of all, let's just get that right. In case y'all didn't know that. Let me hit you with another. How many people die? Go do the You can go look this stuff up. Go, go ask. Go, go put, uh, press in daily deaths. I mean, uh, on the average of deaths on the, in the world. How many people die on a daily basis? Because you got six billion people on the planet. Every day, billions more being born and billions are dying. So, how many people die on a daily basis? Right? Get how many graveyards you usually see. And, and, and you ever notice the graveyards you see, they the same size? They say they don't ever get bigger. It's like, hold up. You see, you see a funeral every now and then. But like, why are why the graveyards stay the same? Right? Ask yourself, what are happening to all, what's happening to all these bodies of these people that are dying that are not cremated? You ever ask yourself that? Huh? Research. That's the, that's the organs. <laughs> They researched the organs. What happened to the body? There's a movie that came out in the night in uh, 1970, either 77, either 70 or 73. Charles and Hanson played it. You should get that movie. It's called Soil and Green. Soil and Green. Charles and Hanson. The movie was was a great depiction of where this place is going. In that movie, it depicted first of all the planet right was devastated by global warming. It was hot. I mean, it was burning up. The planet was burning. It was hot. Right? And the food supply was diminished. There was two classes of people, ultra rich and poor. Not just rich, ultra rich and poor. Right? There were people living, when you walk, when the guy walked, would walk into his apartment, there were people living in the stairwell, sleeping in the stairwell, stairwell sleeping on the streets. Right? And what they would do every day, they would pass out, they would have this food program because food supply of the men, so they manufactured a food that they would feed the people every day, referred to as soil and green. Soil and green, that's what they would give out. And every day, whenever a, a riot would break out, because a riot would break out every day, because people just poured it, broke it, you know, and they would fight, scrambling for whatever little food they could get. And whenever a war would break, and the people, the people that live, the ultra rich, they live in a location where it was hard for anybody to get to. Because it had gotten to a point to where their lifestyle was dangerous. Because you had people that were poor. That's why you have police officers. You have police officers because there's a disparity between the rich and the poor. That's the only reason you got cops. If everybody was provided for, you wouldn't need cops. The only reason, the only reason there's robberies and thefts and home invasion is because you got people that don't have anything. You got the haves and the have-nots. You follow? So they, they were set apart and literally there was the, 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 at the elevation that they were living at, remember the guy, he had to literally climb up, find a way to climb up to get to where they lived because they, they had to live off from the people that were poor. But anyway, whenever a ride would break out, there's this dump truck like machine that would drive through the street and just scoop everybody up, scoop all the people that were riding up and dumping in the back of the truck. 
right? And the whole concept of the movie, not to just tell, not to tell, but you gotta see it because it's a good movie. The whole concept of the movie was that the soil and green they were feeding everybody was really what? Thank you. That's what the movie, at the end of the movie, that's what they found out. Guys that in the, in Alaska, the soccer the soccer team, they crashed, and the only way that was a true story by the way, they crashed, and the only way they could survive was they started eating each other. And I was like, yeah. And my teacher was like, well, that's what you gotta do to survive. And I was like, they couldn't have found more plants than this. Some branch, you know what I'm saying? Some water. But she was like trying to convince us that would be the way to survive. To to pull uh, straws and strings and whoever pulls the shorts. <laughs> And, and, and that's how, in that movie, that's what they had to do. They would, because the people that had died, and they were, they were being preserved because they had crashed when it went snow. So the bodies were preserved. And they had sat down, they come to the, they came to the realization, the only way we're gonna survive is if we eat. And I know we know those people in there, but we gotta rotisserie them niggas. <laughs> or we gonna die. And that's how they survived. And they got saved eventually. You follow? I mean, you ask yourself, you was in that position. I mean, I know, but you, you, you're in you know, hey, listen, listen. you in an area where there's no plants. I'm eating snow, man. I'm eating fish, man. I'm eating fish, man. Hey, 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 listen, listen, you say that, they get the cut that meat on that fire, and it smells like barbecue. <laughs> you say that, but when you're in, in, when you're in survival mode, yeah, you're thinking totally different, man. Because if you start, if you start, if you start, as, you, as you're getting malnourished, you start to deteriorate, your health will start to deteriorate. Because you got to remember, your body what? Your body, when you, when you eat, when you eat, that's energy. What's energy? Heat. Your body generates heat. See, in Africa, we could be vegetarians. Because we ain't worried, we had to worry about heat. Well, I'm telling you in the movie, they were deserted. Well, they, were, they, were somewhere, they were somewhere where they couldn't go anywhere. Because if they, went, if they went too far one way, they couldn't get back to their camp. Remember, you're malnourished. So you, the more you travel, the more energy you're using, and your body's not regenerating so. And you're in a cold environment. You follow? So they couldn't leave far from where they were located. You follow what I'm saying? So they were in a position to where they had, their bodies had to, they had to put some type of energy in their body. And snow wasn't gonna do it. So they had to do that. I'm not, by no, by no means am I justifying, but the, uh, the cannibalism, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is they were in a position where they had to survive. And they lived. They lived, those guys living the day. They to tell that story, they lived. You follow? But there's certain things that have to be done in, that are done in nature that we look at that way. You follow, but there are species of animals that eat their young. Did you know that? The species of animals that eat their young. They, 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 they eat their young. They, if they figure that there's too many of them, or they're not going to advance or progress at the rate that they need to be self-sufficient and survive on their own, they'll eat them. Is there certain kind of, um, like, pets I heard, like, you touch them before they're Yeah, they, 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 because they that that they're defective at that point. There's in a uh, in a, a group of lions, right? And you have a lion, and then the female lions, because you know I like the lion, you know, because he like he have a lot of chicks around. But now, nah, but but you know, and, you know, and, and and if you ever if you ever paid attention, they they run for the food. He just eat it. The only, his only job is to disseminate and to protect. And he don't really do that because they do that. <laughs> My man is ill. He is the king of the jungle. He's Because <laughs> he eat. And they make sure he eat. Right? But the lion, right, when there's a, when, when the, whenever another feline comes around, they sniff him and they inspect him. And if, if, they, if, see, if they sense that something not right about him, they kick her out. They get rid of him. So let's see the, the animal kingdom and humans think that they're, they're far from it, but you are part of the animal kingdom. You know you've seen humans that look like certain animals. You're like a squirrel. You see these that look like a squirrel, y'all know it. <laughs> you like a chip or a rat or something. You, know, right? you look at the nigga, you like, <laughs> and you know it. You gotta remember, when the, when the elders were grafting humans, they used different 
then you know, and they, they were using different creatures to do it. You follow what I'm saying? That's why you look at your skin and you see reptilian skin. You see the sections, the scales. You follow, but you see the hair from the ma the mammal. You follow? And when they were trying to merge the reptile and the mammal together in the in the grafting or the breeding, they couldn't quite get it right. And that's why you have people that have what's referred to as eczema. You follow what I'm saying? Because they, that's a deficiency in the skin. And when they and when that eczema takes over, right, you literally see their skin turn into scales. But that's a product of the of the genetic the genetic grafting that the elders were doing when they were fusing the reptile and the mammal again to, to breed Homo sapiens. You follow? You are a product of a repti reptilian seed and a mammal seed. The most ancient part of your brain is referred to as the reptilian brain. They call it the R complex. That's the oldest part of your brain. That's the part of your brain that gives you what you refer to as your fight or flight mechanism. When you're walking outside in the dark, somebody jump out of you. You know what I mean? And you, you, you know, that whether or not you're going to fight them and defend yourself or you're going to run. That mechanism is triggered, right, when an apparition, right, or a spirit or what they call ghost appears in front of you. It could be your relative that passed on, but as soon as that fight or flight mechanism is triggered, the adrenaline is secreted into your bloodstream and then they disappear because they know at that point you're an animal. Because at that point, you'll hurt anyone or anything in your way. Because And they know that you can't hurt them, but you will become more dangerous to yourself because you can give yourself a heart attack or a stroke because the secretion of those chemicals into your system at that point and the shock to your nervous system will cause you to hurt yourself, to kill yourself. You can go into, you know, there's people that have gotten a certain, a, that, that have been given bad news and they, and they have a heart attack. Yeah, not there. They charge them with the murder because it's a, it, it, because you have to read, there's certain your body goes through certain changes that can kill you. You follow, and that's why that that's it's a dangerous method. It's a dangerous reaction. You follow what I'm saying? So we are not far. Those, those, that's in us. The animal is in you. You follow? You came down and incarnated into an animal's body. You follow? You are reptilian and mammal. That's why the first trimester in the womb, you're, you're a reptile. You have a tail, you have webs, and you have gears. You follow? And then you eventually morph, right? Or grow into a human. You follow? And that's why reptiles, what? They don't have any hair. But mammals do. So you, you're a gravitation or a combination of the two seeds. So the animal nature is in you. You follow? You just got to the point where you think you're separate. You follow what I'm saying? You separate yourself from nature. But you're the same, you're, you're in that, you're along those lines. And there's different species in nature, right? There's different species of reptiles. You got certain reptiles that are cold-blooded and cold nature. You follow? Then you got certain reptiles that they're more mammalian. They nurture their young. Because you know reptiles don't nurture the young, right? And you got women. You got some women who naturally want to breastfeed their children. They naturally want to nurture their young. And then you got some women that they don't want to breastfeed. They don't want that attachment. They just want to look. They keep their baby in the stroller. They never hardly ever pick up. They don't breastfeed. So they want to stay detached from the child. Not realizing that as the child drinks the milk, from the breast, from the memory gland, there's an attachment, that, an attachment that's being made. You follow? So that nature is in you because that's your root seed. Okay? Let me ask you about this. Like, all right, does a baby keep the gills up until like the last point when they're born? Do they just close up like almost immediately? You, they, you're breathing in, your lungs are your gills. You follow? They're, 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 that's your filtration system. The thing is, the mechanism that allows you to breathe in water, once, once you, because at that point, you're metabolizing water, I mean, you're meta your, your, uh, the water's flowing through your system a different way, and the blood 
the little blood, the blood that's in you at that point is being metabolized and processed different, totally different. You follow? Your heart and your lungs work together. They work together for air to breathe in air, right? To bring in oxygen. Your heart pulls the blood to the lungs. The oxygen and the blood meet and fuse to generate the energy that's now pumped throughout your body. You follow? When you're in the womb, that process is totally different. You follow? Because the heart is beating a different way. Right? Your heart is not taking blood to your lungs at that point. You follow? It's taking, your heart is taking the blood a different route. And after you're born, it starts to take it through the lungs. You follow? Go ahead. Next question. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I got a lot, of, I was telling, telling them earlier, I got a lot of feedback, you know, about about it. And it was funny because um, some of the, most of the feedback was coming from the Wabi, that people, or people that should have already known certain things, you know, just, you know, uh, you know certain things that should be done. But, right, you know, his, his, his gravitation, his pull is so great with our people. You know what I'm saying? Because our people, our people like, we, our people start, our, our people begin to love and like illusion. They like the way that the illusionary world makes them feel. You know what I'm saying? And so they begin, they, they get attracted to that. You know, and that's how he pulls our people toward. Our people like uh, not dealing with reality. My idea of a disciple, my disciples are brothers, all these young boys are being taught to act just like me and go out and just teach. If he's introverted, I don't need him. I don't need quiet people sitting in the class absorbing knowledge going on. That's it. I want people that's going to take it in and go out and teach it. They're not going to teach it, we're wasting our time. www.nawapuinc.com